Hi, I'm Ella, also known as Handmade Millennial, and welcome to the sew along for my first pattern with Nomi Patterns. ME 2008 is a twist front jumpsuit with a deep v-neck with bias bound neckline. We also have two sleeve options, both a shorter flutter sleeve and a longer straight sleeve. It's got very wide legs in seam pockets and also a invisible zip with back darts as well. I think it's a perfect outfit for a night out, a night with your friends, a nice dinner, something a little bit more elegant or elevated, but it also can be done up really casually as well with a um, printer, more casual fabric. In terms of fabric choices, I recommend wovens. I'd say light to medium weight fabrics would be good because this twist front can be a little bit bulky, so light to medium weight. Um, I would say any any fabric that has some drape, um, a rayon chalet, a viscose, honestly a linen, cotton blends could all be really nice as well. So have fun with it in your choice and make sure it feels like you. In terms of choosing your size, you can take a look at the pattern and see what size fits with your measurements. But I would also really recommend that you open up the instructions and check out these finished garment measurements that are available on the instructions. So this is the final garment measurement with the ease included. So you can actually just choose a size based on how much ease you would like in your garment and see how you want your garment to fit, whether it's looser or tighter, or however that may be. So I'd recommend choosing your size based on the finished garment measurements. A couple of things you should know, we're gonna be sewing with a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance unless otherwise marked. And then in terms of other tools you're gonna to need, really just thread and a 22 inch invisible zipper. I'd also recommend a um, invisible zipper foot, but it's definitely not necessary. A normal zipper foot works just as well too. I'm going to be making my version today with an ink blue cupro from Core Fabrics. I really like the drape and the texture of this fabric, but you should choose whatever makes the most sense for you. Lastly, I hope you remember to enjoy the process of sewing. I hope this sew along is really helpful in terms of making this jumpsuit a really easy process for you. And don't forget to tag Handmade Millennial and Nomi Patterns in your finished garments. We'd love to see them. All right, let's kick into it. We're going to start sewing up ME 2008. We're going to cut two front band facings. And with all of these pieces, do not forget to carefully transfer your markings and notches. It's really important with this pattern on all of the pieces. Two neck band facings four pocket bags, two right and two left, two front bodice pieces reflected, two back bodice pieces also reflected, two sleeves right and left, two front legs, two back leg pieces, So the first thing we're going to do is to take the front bodice pieces and we're going to finish the edges on the sides of the extensions as well as along the center front. And then we're going to also take the front band pieces and finish the edges of the top and bottom of that as well. So if you don't have a serger, you can also just finish the edges of these with a zigzag stitch. That would be fine. Or if you do have a serger, that's great too. Okay, now that we've finished those edges, the first thing we're going to do is take the bottoms of the extensions and we're going to sew a couple lines of basting stitches here so that we can gather in between the smallest dot and the biggest dot. So not all the way to the edges, just in between those two dots. And we're going to do that on both sides. And then after that, when you get back, we're going to put the two right sides together and stitch in along the center front in between the big dot and the little dot right below. Just in between that space, we're gonna stitch right sides together to start the connection of the front two bodice pieces. Okay, we've got the front bodice here again with the right side of the fabric facing up, the wrong side to the desk. We're going to take the right overlap and cross it over the left overlap now to make a little X, right? Cross it once. And then we're going to cross it 
one more time so that the left overlap is underneath the left bodice front and the same on the other side. And then we've got the right side of the fabric here, the wrong side down, and the right sides are going to match together. Flip over and match together, right sides together, and we're going to pin here in between the big dot and the little dot that's in there. We're gonna pin that and then stitch that. All right, friends, we're back. We're gonna open this one up. We got the right sides of the fabric facing upwards and we've just sewn that seam. Now, next up, we're going to take the left extension and wrap it around and match the big dots to the big dots on the left bodice center front. So the exact same thing that we just did on the left side now. And we're going to pin along this seam and stitch that. But we're really trying to get as close to that um, center twist part as possible without actually catching the twist. The twist should still have some movement. The fabric should be able to pull through there. We don't want to stitch into it, but we want to get as close as possible to it without stitching into it. All right, so here is the bodice front. She's looking good. We're just going to tuck that surged edge under a little bit, just twist it in, and then go ahead and balance out the fabric, pull the knot to get the fabric adjusted just how you like it. There we go, bodice front. All right, we're going to take the front band facings and we're going to align them right sides together on the side that has the notches and we're going to stitch along that entire side and then press that seam open. All right, we've got the wrong side of the bodice facing upwards and we're going to take that connected now band facing and we're going to align it with the right side of the band facing downwards to the wrong side of the bodice front and align it with the small dots at the sides to the small dots on the bodice. Aligning those dots and also the notches. Go ahead and pin that as close as you can to that center front knot. Try to pin it as close as possible and then we're going to stitch along that edge, breaking our stitching at the center and keep pinning along that center edge. You'll notice there's a gap in the middle and that's okay, we're gonna come back for this later. So go ahead and just stitch across that entire area and if you need to break at the center, go ahead and do that. Okay, so we've got the wrong side up and the next thing we're going to do is pull down these center front bands. You'll see we've got a little gap here. You can kind of fit a finger through possibly depending on your fabric. We're going to pull those together the front bands at the center front match the small and large dots and we're going to stitch this seam here. I recommend switching to a zipper foot to be able to maneuver this under your machine. Okay, so at this point, let's just take a look at our front twist and assess how it's doing. For me and this specific fabric, I'm noticing there's a little gaping here where you can kind of see the wrong side of the fabric poking through. So I'm just going to go ahead and sew that part a couple stitches just a little bit closer without actually catching into the knot. You may or may not need to do this depending on your fabric, but just take a look. We've got the wrong side of the bodice facing upwards and we're going to take the right side of the facing front and put it downwards so that we're connecting the right side of the facing to the wrong side of the lower part of the front bodice. And we're going to pin and stitch over here, breaking in the middle. And we're gonna do that on both sides. Okay, so that is stitched. And now we've got the front extension and it's facing. And we need to use these basting stitches to be able to align these two so that they are about the same length. So 
So I'm also noticing for me in this Cooper version that I'm getting a little bit of bubbling here. So I'm also just going to pull this front extension out a little bit to get it flat, to get it to lay just right, and then pin that in place. Y'all, yeah, we are done with the bodice front. That is honestly, for me, the hardest part of this entire pattern. So you deserve a break and a little drink of something good. Good job. Take this opportunity here to just check how everything's looking, how the twist is pulling, and make sure you feel good. We're going to be working on the sleeves. This is the long sleeve version. Make sure you've got your dots marked here and we're going to sew an ease stitch along the top. So we're going to do three lines of basting stitches within the seam allowance between these three dots. After that, we're going to actually form the sleeve. So put right sides together on the sides of the sleeve and go ahead and match the notches and stitch this seam as well for both arms. Go ahead and press that seam after you're done. And then the next thing we're going to do with both sleeves is to just hem the bottom. So see if you get it to a length you like and go ahead and fold over twice and stitch that. Now we're going to take the back bodice pieces and form the darts. So lay them out and make sure you have a right and a left and go ahead and match together the dart tails here and stitch that together. So press those darts and then we're going to come back and sew a stay stitch along the neckline along both pieces. So just a line of basting stitches within the seam allowance there. Then we're going to put the right sides together of the back bodice pieces to the front bodice piece. And we're going to align the top shoulders and go ahead and form the shoulder seam. So go ahead and stitch that on both sides. And then after that, we're going to stitch the side seams on both sides. The bodice is looking like a bodice, y'all. Next up, we're going to insert the sleeves. So we're going to do right sides together of the sleeve inside the bodice. And then we're going to align the seams here at the bottom. And then also align the notches and we're going to pin that and stitch all the way around. We're also going to use those gathering stitches we did to pull them a little bit to just ease the top of the sleeve into the armhole. We're forming the pants now. First, we're going to lay out the back pant legs and make sure we have a right and a left, and then go ahead and match together the dart tail legs and stitch those on both pieces. We're going to do the exact same thing for the front of the pant leg pieces as well. Make sure you have a right and a left. Go ahead and match those dart legs, stitch those, and then make sure you press the darts on all four pieces. We're going to take one front leg and one back leg and match them right sides together. And then we're going to sew the entire inner leg seam, the whole thing. Go ahead and do that for both legs. We're going to take both legs now and match them right sides together at the inner leg seams. So go ahead and match those up and match up the notches and the dots together. We're going to stitch from the large dot at the upper front edge all the way to the back notch. And then we're going to stitch that twice to reinforce the seam. We're going to put the pocket pieces to the pants now. So this is the front pant and you can see the dots we have. We're going to take one pocket piece each and align them with the dots and get the edges, the raw edges even, and then stitch that at a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. And go ahead and do this for both the front and back legs. We're going to match the right sides together of the pants once again and pin the front pants to the back pants at the side seams. Go ahead and match up all of the notches and the pocket bags as well. Pin that and then we're going to stitch along the top of the side seam around the entire edge of the pocket and then down the entire rest of the side seams on both sides. When you finish that, make sure to finish the edges, the seams of those pant sides all around. And then you're also going to make sure you clip into the upper and lower corners of those pockets to give them a little movement. And when you're done with that, we're next going to attach the bodice to the pants. So go ahead and 
pin the lower edge of the bodice to the upper edge of the pants, match those seams, large dots and notches. Go ahead and stitch that and then press it. We're gonna hem the pants next. I like doing this before the end of the project. Feels a little more gratifying. We're going to begin the process of inserting the invisible zipper. Insert your zipper however you like, but here's my method. The first thing I do is make sure that I press the zipper tape. This helps it just get that much closer so that we can get a really nice invisible edge. So I do that on a low setting. We've got our jumpsuit right side out. Go ahead and take your zipper and you've got it right side up right now and then flip it so that it's right sides matching. Align the zipper tape to the top of the jumpsuit and go ahead and switch to your zipper foot and stitch that. We're going to go ahead and you'll see my invisible zipper foot here, but a normal zipper foot works as well. We're gonna put the zipper teeth in the left track and adjust your needle and go ahead and back stitch and stitch that all the way down. You may notice my index finger not looking so hot here. I actually almost surged it in this process. So little casualty of our so long video here. At the end here, just go ahead and get as close to the zipper pull as you can and then back stitch and stop. We're gonna come back to this. Onto the other side of the zipper. Go ahead and get it aligned. And then we're going to flip it over once, the unattached side. And then we're going to flip it one more time the same direction. So we flip that over twice. And then go ahead and pin and stitch, align the zipper tape to the top edge. We're gonna do the same thing on this side, except for we're going to put the zipper teeth on the right side of the zipper foot now. Go ahead, back stitch, stitch that whole thing, getting as close as you can to the zipper pull at the bottom. Go ahead and tuck that zipper pull under one more time and zip her up, see how she looks. You did it fam, one whole invisible zipper. We are gonna look at that invisible zip one more time because she looks so good. But we still got this little gap down here if you'll notice. So we're gonna go ahead and unzip it, open her up inside out, and let's bridge that gap. So go ahead and realign the two edges of the gap here and we're going to just sew from the end of the first round of stitching all the way to where the zipper stitching begins with a normal zipper foot. Take your two neck binding pieces now. We're gonna put them right sides together and stitch along the center front from the lower edge to the large dot, just the small section here. Go ahead and clip into the stitching at the large dot and then also remove some of that seam allowance. And then we're gonna open the whole thing up and first finger press at about a quarter of an inch along the long unnotched edge and then go ahead and press that at your iron as well along the whole thing. On the unfolded edge of this neck binding, we're gonna go ahead and start to pin it along the entire neck edge, matching the centers, large dots, notches, and also placing the small dot at the shoulder seams. I like to start in the center front area and do the right side and then the left side. So notice here that the zipper teeth are rolled inwards. We're going to stitch all the way across there and then half an inch back down the back edges. And then we're going to trim the corner here, but not through the stitching. Optionally, you can also cut out some of the seam allowance around the entire neck binding facing. We're gonna understitch the neckline here meaning that we're going to stitch the seam allowance to the neck binding all the way around, not actually catching the main body of the garment. So this is going to help the neckline stay really flat and not roll outwards. Go ahead and turn the binding and back edges to the inside, rolling the zipper teeth back in place, and then go ahead and press that. 
When you get back from that, we're going to go ahead and baste the inner pressed edge of the binding all the way around the neckline. On the outside, we're going to top stitch just as basted all around, make it look nice and pretty. This is very important actually because um, the bias here, it can get really funky looking if we don't baste it in place beforehand. And then you'll go ahead and remove the basting stitches. And the last step in this whole jumpsuit is to sew a hook and eye closure to the top, back, and opening edges only if you think it's necessary. And then voila, you're done. You have a beautiful twist front jumpsuit.